is de Marantz SD8020. Een luxurious deck met all those counter and program functions. So back in the time there were other decks with similar functions like Bang & Olufsen and Opticona Sharp. And now this one is uh, very nice design with a bunch of buttons, a bunch of turning knobs. And in this video I will explain a little bit how to use this machine, how to program the, the functions. And later on in the video I uh, show you some repairs uh, that were made uh, to this deck. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the, the lid to cover the heads. I think I can find it on the net. Nice thing about this kind of setup is you can just clean the head, clean the, the capstan without uh, taking apart uh, the deck. It's all accessible without removing uh, something. And some addition I did here at the back, you have the remote plug. Now originally it's, it's a plug, something like this, a 9 pole plug. And I connected a uh, infrared receiver to it with a contemporary remote control. Uh, this has the transport functions. I uh, have another one for the standby function, so you can see, you can turn it on and off. Okay, now something uh, that it does, it has the slack removal, eh? so if you have some, uh, some slack, and you put it in, It removes the slack, so okay, that's, that's nice. So you can, when you take it out, it stops automatically, huh? because you push one of those buttons. And then we have here all uh, functions. You see the response is, is very uh, fast because of the solenoids. So that's, uh, that's working well. Uh, then a little bit about uh, programming. So uh, let's say I want to play between 50 and 60 of the counter. Then I go here and I say, okay, my uh, counter memory turn on the counter memory start 50 memory stop is optional uh, 60 memory start goes to 50 and then it stops yeah and this other function this is just uh, the rewind function eh? so if I uh, I would rewind then it starts playing that's uh, that's that function. Then we can uh, use the the program. So uh, you can uh, select tracks. Eh? 
So let's say I like to play track 2 and track 4. Okay, let's review that. 2 and 4. If you are done with reviewing, you press memory. So 2, 4. Okay. You can do it random or sequential. So that is if you program, uh, let's say, uh, 5, 4, 3. If you put it in sequential, it still plays 3, 4, 5. So, okay. So now we have a program. And now we are going to set the timer to start automatically. Let's say we want to start at 10 hour 10. So, uh, on time will be 10, 10. Timer on. Uh, uh, let's say uh, let's say the on time is 10, 11. So we can review it. Uh, switch the timer on and put it in standby. Now with this switch you need to say okay play and what should happen is at 11, 10 11 it should start the program be programmed so to play number two and number four so let's see uh, how this all works it's in standby now eh? so the light is off don't need to put it in standby you can also use the timer just to put it on play or record see now it's turning on it's going to rewind just see which program we are in Now it's going to search for the pause between track 1 and 2. Now it has found track 2. It's going to play. Play back the number 2. Number 2, 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 And after this, the number four should be. Uh, so now it's skipping the number three and playing the number four, like we programmed. So normally you start the program with this button, huh? Eh? Ah, now it's done with number four. You can skip the, the numbers. And you can pause uh, the program. It also applies for the counter. So let's say uh, we like to play from uh, 10 till uh, 50. And then there's the pause button. The strange thing is, when it's playing a program, the stop buttons don't work, so you have to be careful not to force anything. 
and it doesn't have the music search, so you cannot find the next song. That's uh, that's not possible. That's uh, pity. And it's also the question where you like to use this for. I can imagine when you are dubbing a tape, and you only like to uh, have to copy uh, a few numbers of a tape, and you can program the numbers. But otherwise, I wouldn't see the use for uh, for it. So I'm with the skip. I will show you the skip. Let's say uh, we program numbers uh, one, two, three. Let's review that one, two, three. With memory, you go go back to your your display. You can also take out a number. Eh? So if you say okay. One, two, three. I like to take out number two, clear it, and now we have only number one and three. But then, if you program another number, it will be placed into the blank area. So, if I say five memory, it will be placed between the one and three. So, but now I like to uh, so reset one. Two, three, start. Okay, we are at number one now. Now I say I like to skip. Skip a song. Okay, then it's going to look for the for the next one. Eh? Okay, then something about uh, recording. Let's let's make a recording. Turn on the song here. So when recording, you would need to be sure that this one is in off position, otherwise it won't record. This one is in off position. So that's all. Uh, that's all good. So now let's say we always when recording put the mic all the way down. It's only causing noise in the in the recording. Okay, so let's hear that back. Good. Yeah, and then uh, about the timer, you can choose only to work with an on time. It doesn't turn off automatically. Or you can choose to only with work with an off time. So you turn it on manually and it's turning off automatically. Or you can use both. So you can. Uh, Let's see. Uh, for example, for example, I only want to turn it off in the future. So let's say at uh, ten twenty, it has to turn off. Off. Ten. Twenty. Oh, it was remembering this one, so 
only enough time turn it off activate the timer and now it knows I have to turn on because I have an off time in the future uh, so uh, okay playing a song now And then it should turn on off at 1020. So now it's in uh, <laughs> turned in standby automatically. So you can choose uh, which time, which times you are using, only on, only off, or both. So when you are uh, recording, in order for the program detection to work, you need to uh, include the pause between the numbers and this is a way to do it so we just press the button and you get a second counter and it is putting a blank space onto the tape See if you can find it back. Yeah. Now he has the blank space. So that is what that's used for. Then some things about the repair. So first of all you have of course all the rubber parts. Uh, so you need to check the, the belt of the of the capstan if it's not uh, slipping or anything. And then uh, back here is a tire, it's against the white pulley for fast forward and rewind. That tire gets dried out. And then on the front, behind this lid is the same kind of tire. So we have two tires, one in the front, one in the back. They dry out and they don't work anymore. And yeah, the pinch roller, you need to check it, but for this one it, uh, it was still good. Then this is a picture of the of the front of the deck. So this is the tire of the of the fast forward and rewind you need to replace. Unfortunately, on the internet I only can find the non-original tires. I think they're used for water taps or something uh, that doesn't have anything to do with cassette players. But yeah, so now there's a little bump in it and. It rattles a little bit when it's uh, when it's playing. So, unfortunately, not the original tire I found. Then, a problem was that the heads were not coming up all the way, and the pinch roller was not coming up all the way, making a terrible uh, whining uh, uh, sound with speed going up and down. And that was because of this lever. It was uh, with hardened. Uh, grease, so I put a few drops of oil between it and this lever it activates uh, this fork to catch uh, the fast forward tire in the middle in play mode anyhow uh, if you have the same kind of problem that the heads are coming not up all the way just check uh, at the bottom here uh, this lever that is uh, uh, moving freely then this pulley is just running in in on this on this uh, shaft without uh, driving anything but I still installed the rubber band so the rubber band is between the reel and this pulley that is not connected to anything 
also for this one so the take up and the supplier reels both have this uh, this uh, this this belt just install them it's I think for the to give a little bit of counter force when uh, winding the tape so it winds with the correct uh, tension then I needed to clean the plunger of the Q solenoid so the head was moved down too far and searching for programs so it, it skipped all programs because the head was down so this is uh, working in pause and in Q mode when searching for programs I needed to clean the plunger it was uh, sticky it was a little bit corroded then for the speed so this motor drives the, the capstan and there is a little hole in behind and I made a tiny screwdriver that I can put in the hole and then uh, you can adjust the speed and yeah you can find on the internet uh, plenty of signal generators and if you record a tone with a known good adjusted uh, cassette player and then play it back in the player you want to adjust now and then with the frequency counter you can just uh, precisely adjust uh, the speed so that's the capstan motor then we have the fast forward and rewind motor it's all servo controlled that's why we have two uh, optocouplers to monitor the speed of uh, the take up and the supply reels and those were bad so and what happens when they are bad then it uh, goes to stop in a few seconds so if those are bad so that black square piece is a new optocoupler and there's another one down there so uh, if they don't work you put it in play then it monitors no movement because the, the optocoupler is bad and then it goes into stop after a second so and there are two two optocouplers for the servo system uh, when winding it keeps a constant speed uh, so when uh, looking for a program in Q mode it has the constant speed to uh, monitor the mutes in between the songs so uh, that is that then a the problem I had was the voltage regulator so we have a st standby power supply and this one has only one primary winding so the, the real power transformer you can select with the, with the voltage selector but this one receives always the same power so if you are in a country with 110 volts it goes from uh, like 20 volts via the voltage regulator to only 10 volts for the processor but if you are in a country like me and you have 220 volts you get secondary of 40 volts which needs to be regulated down to 10 volts so this one is producing a lot of heat and some components the, the, the Zener diode and the driver transistor were bad causing uh, to have uh, 29 volts on the processor instead of 10 volts so I'm really surprised that it did survive that and I put a over voltage board here so if that happens again if the voltage comes above uh, 10 volts then it shorts out the whole power supply and the fuse will blow so this is a little over voltage uh, board I, uh, I made and I uh, I put it in the recorder what did fail was below the microprocessor board yeah, it's somewhere below there is a board with some logic uh, ICs uh, MC 140 like like and gates and R gates and that failed so and the display wasn't working because of that uh, 
and the board with the gauge what is doing it's a little add-on board and when you take it out it just keeps on working but when I uh, start a program number 18 for example okay it accepts when I program number 19 it doesn't accept you cannot program it it starts blinking now this blinking is and the preventing from uh, storing into the memory is done by this little circuit board with the logic ICs below this board so it's you know, some kind of uh, bug fix but I try to uh, program number 19 uh, without this board and it just uh, plays number 19 and when it's done it displays uh, number 20 so after playing number 19 you get the 20 on the display and everything works so I'm really not sure what this board uh, what it was installed for but that board yeah it had uh, the bad uh, ICs because of the over voltage but the processor remained working so if yeah, somebody has a broken processor yeah it would be a nice uh, project to uh, to uh, make a new one from a 8051 based uh, processor or, so or something this is a 4 bit processor running on a 400 kilohertz uh, oscillator and you cannot take out the software so you cannot uh, bring the program code onto the pins so it's it's you know, not to be read out so okay that about uh, the over voltage protection uh, then some sometimes the record switches are a little bit dirty and you get uh, that is meters in play mode they are just flickering and one channel is not playing or, or something and then you just have to clean the switches by just pressing them let's say uh, 10 or 20 times or you can if you have the, the deck covered uh, you can uh, clean the switches by going in uh, in record let's say uh, 10 times and that's yeah that cleared out the, the problem with uh, with playing back so and then for the remote control this is the remote control plug it does have all the transport functions and uh, the mute function even but you cannot put it on standby with uh, with this so I made a little extra plug for the power supply of my infrared receiver and for the standby contact so when I didn't want to mess up the backside of the recorder so I made a little uh, a little plug below nobody can see it so that's for the power supply of the infrared receiver and the standby contact